I'm back! They never go anywhere. It's two seconds later. Have you ever seen these Mentos? These are basically Mentos I used to get because... Um, they not they weird how like everything you can think of, I don't know if it's just me, just like creates another thousand stories that I can tell. Mentos, I was going to say, I used to go to... Um, I just thought of another story for this actually. Mentos, I used to go to America with my parents when I was younger, like every year, very privileged, I'm very, very glad about that, because I'll tell you what, since I've become an adult, I haven't gone to America since. Um, American sweet. Foo Fighters enthusiasts will remember Mentos there in one of the, I think it's um, Big Me or Easy Me or something like that. <laughs> As you can tell, these aren't the American Mentos, these are the cheaply found European Mentos, which says Bon Bon Tendre Dragafis. So, I forgot one way of the story was now. I'll tell you one story actually, coming from when I was in America. We used to drive around, literally, we used to get up and spend three weeks out in America and we used to do um, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, the Key West, uh, Las Vegas, California, Santa Monica, one of my favourite places. Um, just to spend a couple of days each one and driving up the coast and through, absolutely amazing. I didn't even properly appreciate it at the time. I was only like 10. 11, 12, but I, I did appreciate it, you gave me wrong, I, no. <laughs> I appreciated the sunshine and not going to school and driving around and I used to pick up all the American, you know, all the American comics like your X-Men's and your uh, Gen 13, mainly X-Men, I was always a Marvel person, so X-Men, Generation X, Amazing X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, um, Excalibur, Oh, it was the one with Cable, who used to, used to have his own team. Let's come back to you on that one. There's only so much I can remember. Um, brilliant. And I, I, I miss it like fucking crazy. I absolutely miss it like crazy. I just want to step foot on, on, on some American soil. And it, 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 it influenced my musical thing so much. I mean, this is before I even discovered like hardcore or trance or techno or drum and bass. It was all about the rock. And it was absolutely brilliant. Like I picked up Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar. Which at the time, I know everyone, you're all thinking, oh Marilyn Manson, we all know Marilyn Manson. But at the time, this is literally before, if you were in England, you had not heard of Marilyn Manson. And even they think, well he's a bit sad. He's like, Tommy, he wasn't sad. If you were into your pop music and your trendy stuff, you hadn't heard of Marilyn Manson, so he wasn't like a figure of ridicule. And if you were into your metal and you knew who Marilyn Manson was, it was like, you know, with all this bondage and stuck gear and long hair and into all the drink and the drugs. And you know, his music was fucking brutal. You know, Antichrist Superstar, you had all these film samples and everything. But yeah, I picked up. Mary Manson, Antichrist Superstar, before it even come out in the UK, he had a fucking beach stall on Santa Monica Beach. I mean, how fucking cool is that? And went back to the hotel and listened to it. And it was just, I just, I just fell in love with the whole thing. And it was absolutely brilliant. And even if it didn't really matter whether I liked Mary Manson, it made me fall in love with the whole not normal of life. And it was really, really good. But anyway, the story that, that, that I was leading on to, um, I just thought of another story, was basically I bought a Marilyn Manson t-shirt. It was black. This was about, about when I was about 14. Long sleeve black Marilyn Manson. I had the poles cut out in the sleeves so I could get my thumbs through. That was the cool thing to do. Um, so on the front... I had Marilyn Manson as some weird kind of deathly dead angel 
type person. It was a pretty cool image. Well, I'll have to try and post it on. I'll post it on my Facebook page, the Ryan McCarr Facebook page. Um, and on the back, it had. I don't know if anyone's ever seen. You know the Atlas whatever it is, where you've got the man, and he's like that, but then he's also like that, you've got all the four arms and the circle and everything. It was basically that, but him as like a deadly angel type thing. I mean, all round the circumference, so you're learning something here, that's the perimeter of a circle. Um, it said, um, dried up, tied up, died up, or something like that, forever, all fucked up, and dead to the world, and that's what it said on the t-shirt. Now, I did a paper round at the time, so I used to go, and, and as you can imagine, the majority of people who get their papers delivered at four in the afternoon are old women, and men. So they didn't really take kindly to the old dried up, died up, fucked up forever on the old, on the old t-shirt. So I got, I got told I wasn't allowed to wear that anymore. <clears throat> which was a bit of a shame and I was, you know, I was really like, oh, fuck the system at the time and I always thought it was a bit, they said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't wear that t-shirt on your paper round anymore. And I was like, how dare you? This is censorship at its worst. How can you tell me I can't wear that t-shirt? And then looking back, and I think it's just because, like, it's amazing how fuddy-duddy is you get when you get old. I think... Well, no, that's fair enough. Some old fucking, you know, they're quite sensitive old ladies. I don't kind of want to see a load of fucking swear words on a bloody t-shirt. Um, wasn't even that clever. I do like, what my favourite rude t-shirt is from Cradle of Filth, Dead Girls Don't Say No. <laughs> Which is true, isn't it? And my favourite... Um, name of a band which shouldn't ever been named is um, the pro-abortion death metal band um, Womb to the Tomb which I've got in trouble which people have been like Ugh. I mean it's like you can say things without you know, you know it doesn't matter if anyone who's ever met me would be like you know he's a really sound nice pleasant well-meaning guy just because you say something a bit out there that doesn't mean you know you live your life by it some things can be funny and not mean anything or hurt anyone so yeah womb to the tomb I thought that was quite funny even that people I didn't go at me about that I'm not the one. I wouldn't name my own band that. I'm just 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 bringing it out there, saying that that, that exists. Um, so we were somewhere down down the coast, somewhere between Florida and Key West or whatever. I was about thirteen year old, <clears throat> and I'm sitting by the side of this harbour, and I've got my legs dangling over the over the harbour over the edge. And I was on this plastic white seat, and I thought the plastic white seat was grafted to the floor. But it wasn't. And there's various boats in, in, in the, uh, the harbour. So I'm sitting there, and I could just feel the, the chair just... I, I, I felt like I was getting closer and closer to the harbour. And then when I look back, the chair was coming off and the chair wasn't grafted to anything. And I could just feel myself going in and in and in. And I just fell off the side of the harbour in this chair. And in front of me was a boat with a big engine. And I basically just fell into this boat, cracked both knees off this huge engine. And then just fell into the mucky harbour. I just about managed to climb out. And I could barely walk for about two days. <laughs> and my new Marilyn Manson fucking t-shirt I've just been talking about, which I literally bought, you know, this is my American Marilyn Manson t-shirt. From that day on, was always a very light shade of grey, other than black. Because of the uh, Florida water. So... There you go. That's the end of that one.